you smell. Well, that's not a very kind way of greeting someone to the server after logging in after a while. And what is that? Kit told me to be recording when I logged on the server and what? It... It... Hey? What's this? What? Uh, okay, wait, what? What? What is this? What is this? <laughs> That's my shopping area! <laughs> Why is there a fountain there? <laughs> okay. Okay. That's my old... Has he just built houses filled with random blood? He built a tower! He, he's even made roads with it. So, so these are makeshift sheep. Okay. Yep. He's basically worked off my signing and, and plans on where to put what. We, we gotta use this tower and get an over, like an overview view. Is, is that even a thing? Overview view? This is the most random thing ever. By the way, I will explain the end stone in my inventory in a moment. You know what? I'm quite impressed, honestly. I'm quite impressed he has actually been able to pull this off. I, I'm not gonna lie, this is not what I had planned for my village. <laughs> you know what? GG, kid. GG. <laughs> Speaking of which, I have a lot of plans for today's episode. Today we will be catching up by a lot. Today we will be building the marketplace right here, which is marked by these fences right here. But also, very importantly, we will be building the big road that is going to go right down here over to the other side. Basically, I've chosen a very specific style that I want to go for in this village, and that is cottage core. Before, I had just set the style as medieval, and I hadn't really specified other than that, and not gonna lie. I was kind of panicking, but now I've set a style, I think it's going to fit me very well. I'm not a good builder, but I think trying out this style is actually going to benefit me, hopefully with getting better at building, but also because it works very well with working with terrain, and that is something that I really love doing. Plus, Cottage Core kind of fits with, well, everything. Want to branch off all of a sudden and do something steampunk? Yep, it fits. Want to build a dwarf castle fortress entrance? also fits. So yeah, that is the build style that I will be going for. And also I should say that in general, I want to do more per episode. So each episode is a little bit more juicy with content. You know what I mean? I'm also going to try and shorten the episode length so it's not that long. So it's a little bit easier to watch. But enough of that boring stuff. We want to get to the good stuff. So you're probably wondering why I had endstone in my inventory earlier, right? Now, you may be wondering, why do I have this in my inventory? You can probably guess what happened. Um, basically, Chase, Chemistic and I, we went down an end busting and I actually did stream it, but this is pretty much my loot right here. Yeah, that's a lot. But most importantly, we have the Elytra and also 50 shulker shells, which I do want to sell in my shopping area as well. So yeah, also some of this has mending, like, it's some pretty good stuff, some of this. But I am going to take the Elytra. I know Kid is selling rockets, uh, I believe at spawn. So I hope there's still some left. All right. Let what was that lag? All right, I should be able to use one rocket to get to spawn. And hopefully I'll be able to buy some rockets off of Kid. This looks like a place for the rockets. It writes Elytra for sale. 15 diamonds each? That's not bad. One stack of rockets for one diamond. Rockets. <laughs> All right. Ooh. You know what? He will just he'll just have to <laughs> restock. There we go. Rockets. Good. Right. I know for a fact that Hocus has been setting up a shop as well over by his place. Look at Hocus's place. Like I said, this is what I'm competing against. Look at that tower. Look. That's a cactus farm. I'm way behind. <gasps> yes, at the time. Yes, gravel. Ooh. Hocus, you might have just... Oh. ah, ah, Hocus! Huh? What? Hello? Anyone? Okay, he does have gravel. But Hocus! <laughs> I need andesite. One stack for one diamond. I will actually... I don't know how much I have at home, so I'll take that. Thank you very much. Wool pick and mix. Read book. I might need that for something else later. <laughs> You know what, this is kind of giving me a preview though of what my village is going to look like once it starts getting populated. Oh, it's nice to be able to fly. This is nice. Amradon has given me permission to basically use his villages and they have mending. Emeralds for sale. Ooh. Books for sale. Two diamonds each. 
All right, I might have to go through this. Let's see with that. I just definitely like Silk Touch. So I'll definitely could be going through the... Actually, I might do it now. Two diamonds each. So I'll definitely take a Silk Touch. Fortune 3, that would be an upgrade. I don't know if I have a... You know what? I got enough diamonds to spend. Efficiency 5. You know what? Feather Falling 4. Mm, you know what? <laughs> These are just too good books to not take when you see them. Right, I will have to come back here. My inventory is getting kind of full, but Amradon should have another shop nearby. Am's Market. So let's see what Amradon has for sale. Am's Market. Take what you want, pay what you want. Okay, so this is a bit of a mix of... Ooh. Spyglass. Hmm. Andesite. Ooh. All right. You know what? I do need Andesite. I do want the Spyglass. Nah. That's a bit dangerous. Block, bar, and beyond. But, oh, I guess that's closed for now. <laughs> All right, I think that is the shopping stuff done for this episode. We did we did good, actually. There's a bunch of, it, of very useful stuff here. So that was some good diamond spending right there. This is kind of my random chest, so I'm going to put some random stuff in here. Um, <laughs> until I get stuff sorted. Uh, actually, did I... Please tell me I got an unbreaking book. Did I get an un unbreaking book? Back I go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first things first, unbreaking three, right there, that's one. Now I need, uh, ah, mending. Ooh, 14 emeralds for a mending book. Okay, beautiful, and what does it say? Emeralds for sale, emeralds, one diamond per stack. All right, thank you very much, good sir. And I don't have any more books with me, but when I do, I will be able to get more mending books for my other tools and armor as well. All right. Unbreaking 3 and mending. Boom. Now our Elytra has Unbreaking 3 and mending, which is really, really awesome. But with all the shopping done, I think it is about time that we actually get to work here. I need to clean up the paths and I want to get work on the marketplace as the first thing. But before I can get to work on the building stuff, I need to gather a bunch of resources. So I'm going to take this shulker box as well as this shulker box. And I'm going to go ahead and gather a bunch of resources. And that means I need to be purchasing some more stuff. So the book says for one diamond, you can select 64 pieces of wool of any combination of colors from the wool farm. So I've got ahead and done that. And I have taken, so that's one stack, one stack, and one stack. So that is basically three diamonds right there. If I've understood everything correctly. These are going to go in this shulker. Next, I need to go mining for some andesite because I need quite a lot of it. And the perfect place to do that is my branch mining area. Ah, here we go. A good patch of andesite. And after a quick mining trip, I now have all the andesite that I will need. I also grabbed some tough, some blocks of amethyst, and some dripstone blocks. Oh, and I also grabbed a little bit more gravel. The next thing I will need is a lot of wood. So I better get chopping. And after chopping way too many trees, I now have a lot of wood, which is all going to go into this shulker box. I'm then going to take these saplings and I'm going to replant them, but this time so that they're all touching each other. That way it's going to make it way easier next time I need wood to just go in and mine without having the space in between them. So just do this. This is a lot of saplings. But it's worth it. Next thing I want to get is actually getting some andesite. I was thinking I want either calcite or andesite. But since calcite is generated by amethysts, I think I'll be getting some andesite. But I do remember I found an amethyst at one point, so maybe I'll be able to find it. Back down in the mine I go. Aha! I did find it. There's a lot of amethyst here. But that is not what I'm after. I'm after this. Whoa, it mines instantly. I didn't know it did that. Okay, this is gonna make this a lot more interesting. Definitely not the easiest block to mine though, because it's in this weird layer. With that said, I already have two stacks. And after only a few minutes, I already have five stacks, which should be plenty for what I need it for. Now the next thing I want to do is actually take these azaleas, or some of them anyway, that Kit very kindly provided me with. And I want to go ahead and actually grow them and then shear all the leaves. Because as far as I know, these these acelia leaves, they don't change color depending on what biome they're in, unlike other leaves. So these are perfect for building. 
Plus they just look great. Plus I also need a bit of oak wood, so perfect combination. That is a lot of azalea leaves, exactly what I need. Actually gotta go ahead and make another shulker box, so I can store them in there, because I'm running out of room. Now before we actually continue and go ahead with the build, I actually just want to upgrade some of my tools and armor real quick. You see I really want mending on the armor and the tools, because as you can see my axe and pickaxe, it's, it's about to break. So what I'm gonna do here actually is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a Fortune 3 book on this so it's Fortune 3 which is going to cost me 6 levels which is fine. And then I'm gonna take these boots right here and I'm gonna pop on Feather Falling 4 which is much needed. And then what I have left is a Silk Touch book as well as an Efficiency 5 book. Now I'm gonna grab my 59 emeralds and my 5 books and I'm gonna head on over to Amradon's Villagers. And I'm gonna buy an Unbreaking 3 book from this guy and then I'm gonna get a Mending book from this guy for just 14 emeralds as well. I'm gonna get 3 because I don't have any more emeralds and I don't have diamonds on me. Which I really need to start wearing an ender chest on me because I needed another efficiency 5 book. Plus I wanted to give Amradon a tip but don't worry, I'll be back. Amradon has put a lot of work into getting those villages to where they are. So I don't think it's fair that I just go ahead and just for free use them all. I think it's only fair that I repay him somehow. I'll be sure to do that later when I stop by to get the efficiency 5 book. But for right now, I want to make another diamond pickaxe, just like so. Then I want Unbreaking 3 on it, I want Efficiency 5, and then I want Silk Touch, just like that. And I'm out of levels. But now, at the very least, I can actually start picking up my che ender chest, when it's clean anyway. Now what I'm actually gonna do, is I'm gonna head to the nether, I'm gonna head to the stronghold, then I'm gonna head down to the end, and I'm gonna fly over to British Widow's Enderman farm to get some more levels. If... I'm able to whoa there's some levels on the bridge I mean do I have mending on all this? oh yeah the elytra is mending I forgot <laughs> well this is a lot of levels that's just satisfying now isn't it I don't want to mending on anything yet right now I'm just getting level the levels onto my character thank you British Widow ow whoa okay maybe add some fences <laughs> 27 levels, I don't need 30 in order to do this, plus my light has now been fully repaired. Now I'm gonna head back home, and now I can add mending to my most important stuff, which is right now my Fortune 3 pickaxe, my axe. I'm not gonna mend my sword just yet, nor my shovel, because I think I will be changing those. Let's add mending to my boots, because they're starting to get really, really good. With that done, I'm now going to go back to the portal. Don't worry, this all has a relation to building the marketplace and everything. Don't worry, we're getting to it. Now I can go back to British Widow's Enderman farm and I will be able to repair my axe and pickaxe. Now they won't break when I go to build my stuff. Boom, fully repaired. Equip the pickaxe, back to it. And fully repaired. Now we can go back home and start building. Never mind, scratch that. I gotta clean up first. <laughs> But let us begin the time lapse of cleaning up and building. So without any further ado, with all the preparation now done, let's get to work.
And with that, the marketplace has now been constructed. And let me tell you, I am very happy with this. So we have a path here going around. We have a fountain in the middle made out of amethyst. We have these lanterns right here with acelia leaves growing freely. I think this really adds to the place. And then of course we have the booths around here, which I have moved the items from the old shop into here. So we have the deep slate and we have the spruce. We have the glowing sack over there. And I have actually adjusted some of the prices as well. And now I know this looks very bare, but I will be adding more stuff to be sold later in the future, hopefully very soon. Now I do want to say that these booths I have right here, I did follow a tutorial on them. And I will be leaving a link for that tutorial down below in the comments because it was actually really really helpful but like i have explained before i'm not a very good builder and i'm not used to building in this sort of style so following these kind of tutorials and getting a taste for it basically is really going to help me and i feel like this just this alone has benefited me from improving in this build style a lot i was able to take the basic style he had in the tutorial and then add my own small touches to it now one thing we weren't selling before was shulker boxes and may i introduce to you sulking shulkers <laughs> That's the only name I could come up with, but I, I love it. Four diamonds per shulker box. So Ramblas, if you're watching, shulker box is for sale. I want to give a name to each and every of these booths. Um, I just I just haven't been able to figure any out. So if you have any suggestions, do put them down below in the comments. So yeah, I'm very, very happy with how that turned out. I think now that we have actually managed to do that, I want to clean up this whole area. Sorry, kid. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I want to clean up this whole area and then I think I want to work on the main road so I will be able to start attaching my house and the marketplace to it. So without wasting any more time, I still have my resources, I'm good to go, let's get to work. And with that, everything has now been cleaned up, even the old shack over there. And Kit's little prank has ended up giving me all this, except for the bamboo. That's mine. But the rest... Yep. Half of this. Yep. All Kit. This has benefited me, though, actually. It's given me a couple deep slates, some more andesite, and yeah, other useful blocks. So, Kit? Thank you. <laughs> now with that done, we can actually get to work on the main road. It's gonna start down there somewhere and then snake its way up all the way over here. I am planning to have some other bills here on the edge, so I don't want the road to hit too much into this area. So I'll need to try and snake it around here so there's space to build on each side of the road pretty much. So let's get to it. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we now have a road. And yes, there's, there's some sort of cave or something right beneath me. I don't know where it is. But anyways, we now have a pretty decent looking road, if I do say so myself. I'm actually very happy with how this turned out. And yeah, I think I think it looks good. British Widow also came by to help out and he placed down this, uh, this custom tree. But I think I might have to place some more of these down here and there to just, yeah add stuff to the place but yeah we now have a road uh i know th this part is bugging me right here but i'm not gonna worry about it too much because i will be changing up the house a little bit and the surrounding area so i'll probably end up changing the path as well now i have stopped the road right here and i also as you could see right down there by that lantern because i don't know at this point in time where i need the road to be i might need to have it well go straight down i might need to have it go like this down here i don't know it kind of depends on what cam's plans are but i think if i just make it go down like here or something slightly down to this ground here i think that could work but i've got to worry about that another time for now this works very well oh yeah british widow actually added those trap doors right here to just kind of hide the wood and i think i'm gonna do that on the others 
Uh, not like that. Yeah, it adds a little bit more texture to the place. And in case you're curious on what type of blocks I've used, I've used stripped spruce wood. That took me like four attempts to say. And then deep slate posts with lanterns, of course. But then on the road itself, I have used gravel and the side. And I've actually used dripstone blocks. And I think it actually makes the road look very well. I've also used tough and coarse dirt. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And I think it feels quite natural as well, the way it's formed. So I'm very happy with this. But unfortunately, guys, this does bring us to the end of today's episode. We did a lot of progress, though. We finished the marketplace, we got started on the road, and we went shopping and got mending on some of our tools right here. And by the way, don't worry, in the next episode, I will go back to Amradon's village place, and I will leave him a tip, like I said I would. I'm not done shopping there anyway, so I need to go back anyway. Now, in between episodes, I will actually be upgrading my house, and then at the beginning of the next episode, we can go through the changes and see what I have done with it. Speaking of next episode as well, I have a huge project planned that I've never done what I'm planning to do before so I'm a little bit terrified but I'm also very excited so if you don't want to miss that be sure you're subscribed and enable those notifications so you won't miss the next episode also just quickly before we end this episode I just want to announce that I have released merch so if you're interested in getting a hoodie maybe a t-shirt or a mug and support me in the process you could do so by clicking the link down below in the description or go to binaryvigilante.com slash merch but anyways, that's the end of this episode. If you enjoyed this one and didn't watch the last episode, I highly recommend that you do because I worked with Kid to prank British Widow and I'm way too happy with how it turned out. So if you want to see that, click the box on the right. You can also click the box on the left, which is the video YouTube things you will enjoy. And on the middle, you can support me on my Patreon page. But that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day and goodbye.